really changed the last time I took this drive. Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartung Family Farms. And today it's June 27th. It'll be my first day back on the farm in over a month. But down in Tennessee, as you guys have noticed in this last video card to this one right here, I, uh, like I said, I spent my time in kind of western Tennessee, meandered my way through Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, on my way back home. But since I've been gone for a month, uh, you know, everyone was pretty much done planting right before I left. You know, I, if you guys can remember, we literally got done planting Tuesday night of the May 24th, and I left, oh shoot, it wasn't Tuesday, but we, and I left like two days later after we got done planting. So just about everybody in our area, including us, was done with planting before I left. But obviously, with the extreme heat that most of the United States has had these last couple weeks, and with some sporadic rains that we've had as well, including a two inch rain that we got literally three days ago, which was life saving. Everything looks is green. Corn is anywhere from a foot to three and a half to four feet tall. Beans are canopied in some spots. You know, crops are really growing. They're really taking off. So I wanted to go up to the farm. I know I want to go help move hay at some point. I don't know if that'll be on this video or not. But I want to go up and basically just see how things have progressed, what things have been going on. I know we have finished first crop hay, so I'll take you around that new piece of equipment that we got. And really just kind of catch you guys up, so I'll see you guys at the farm. That house is new, and this shed is all brand new. It's a giant shed. Nice. Well, GoPro is slow at turning on, but here's our first, well, not first planted, but first quarter planted cornfield. It was about a quarter of the way down and we did that. And it was, it's right now, like I said, two and a half, three feet tall. But also Curtis was hauling beans out of the uh, the bin, the grain there and there on that farm. And like I said, I wanted to get that camera on, but it wasn't. Oh man, this corn is looking good. Minus that rocky point up on top of that hill. This corn is looking phenomenal here. Nice and dark green. This corn's about a week and a half earlier than this corn. You can tell it's a little bit taller, but still. Looks like we're moving cattle around. Hmm. That's different. Shed has no siding on it whatsoever. Let's go take a look. So I know, like I said, I know they got first crop hay done. I know we have been tedding the hay this year. We actually have an intern working for us this summer. His name's Darren, really nice guy. I know it's because he's because we had extra manpower, we've been able to use our tedder with this buzz is basically you fluff the hay up halfway between when you rake it and when you cut it. Just kind of helps make a more higher quality hay. We've had this thing for a while, we just haven't been able to use it just because we usually don't have the manpower. Well, we do this year, so we've been able to do that. Pigs. I don't know why the New Holland and the loader tractor is sitting right here. Maybe it's just out of the way or what. I'm not sure. So as you can kind of see, uh, that shed has seen better days. And by better days, I mean it is almost shot. Don't know if a windstorm came and tore a lot of that siding off or if they're just tearing the building down. I'm not sure how fast Pat or Nathan on that one. Because that's definitely, like I said, that's brand new since... Uh, well, since the last time I've seen it. Looks like they did chop some hay because I see some freshly packed down stuff on the bunk. We'll try to take a full wheel ride, go, do, go check some crops, go see what's new around here. New tires for something here soon. Hi piggies. Hi piggies. You guys are a little bigger. Hi. Yeah. Hi. You guys are a lot bigger. It's the last time I saw you. Hi. I like pig gates because I can just step over them. Hi guys. All right, all right. Hey, there goes Kyle. Man, you'd swear this tractor's in downtown Chicago or something. Tire's stolen right off it. So you can kind of see them on the side by side, but we get this thing set up on a sprayer so we can go out and hand spray pastures with thistles and stuff like that. Stuff that we don't want. I'm just gonna take this thing on a quick joyride, see what all we got going on. Nathan's all on corn right now. Pat just got done with basketball practice. He is the new head bat boys basketball coach at Easton Valley, so congrats to him. And Curtis was all on beans, but now him and Darren, the intern, are uh, changing all on the truck. Right there. Well, we got our big water tank working. See, we got about 500 gallons in it right now. Cool. So they got that set up. That's kind of nice. Don't know how much they've been using. It makes more sense to use it when you're uh, post-emerge spraying corn because pre-emerge I use a lot less water. I use 12 and a half to 15 gallons an acre. Where post-emerge we're using close to 20 just because we want a lot more coverage because what we want to do is we want to 
with post emerge we want to contact the leaves so the more water that you have the more contact that you have on the leaves whereas for burn down or pre-emerge that is we're just we just want to cover the ground so we don't need to use 20 gallons that's just it's just putting a little bit more of a layer on there which for what we found this year really doesn't matter so like i said for post emerge we have a lot more waters therefore we need to handle a lot more water because we have a semi we can pull the semi in here fill up a full tank of water and drive it down to the sprayer whereas before with the wagon we only could do that at 20 mile an hour and we could only hold 1400 gallons compared to 2000 now while i'm also here let's walk into our first planted field of the year this was planted on may uh gotta remember around may 10th may 12th somewhere around there I think closer to May 10th. Shoot, it might even be May 9th. I don't know. Card of this video right here is when it was planted. Let's take a look. We, she's tall. Like I said, for the date right now, we are right around, right around, we are at June 27th. Knee high by the 4th of July is always a great saying. Doesn't matter what the type of the year is. We usually want to be knee high by like the last week of June. And as you can kind of see, we're uh, chest high, easy. Corn's looking good not a lot of disease pressure that i can see i'm sure we'll have some tar spot coming in later but right now everything is looking fantastic we had a lot of tar spot last year and what tar spot is is it's basically oh you can hear here we go there's some tar spot starting you can kind of see there's a little bit of tar spot starting and that's these little blights right here i believe that's tar spot i'm not an agronomist this is just off of what i've learned from other people and from previous use experience and like i mentioned before we were getting very very dry before this rain and we got a two inch rain three days ago and this like i said ever i was talking to nathan right after we got that two inch rain i mean stuff just immediately perked up greened up and this stuff is off to the races that two inches is really going to carry us for the next two weeks especially if we don't get anything which we're not supposed to it's going to carry us through tassel like i said there's even some plants that are at my head so that's that's awesome so this is our first planted corn contrast to uh our least planted corn. Let's go to let's go do that next. Oh yeah. That broke right there. We gotta replace that this off season at some point. That's no good. And here's the contrast to our last planted corn field. We are still, I guess this was planted on May 24th or May 26th, some one of those two. And this is a little bit higher than knee high, which that's pretty good, especially for our last field. It has not been sprayed with a second pass. I should have said before, we are two thirds done with our post emerge corn spray. It's getting a pretty late as far as timing goes, but Pat only has three more farms left. So he's getting close, but that has been, the weeds are, the field looks clean. It's very nice. We're not gonna apply anything on that thing for a little while now, except for some fungicide and more than likely we are going to be putting a lot of an added, of a uh, nitrogen add additive stabilizer. I'm not sure what the exact technical term is, but the product is called Source. We tried that last year and had phenomenal results. Tried 80 acres worth, which was a plain load. And we had, we had a large yield bump, well over 20 bushel. And the best part was the stand was amazing. Let's go take a look at that. But here's what I was talking about. We have source for soybeans and we have source for corn, which is around here somewhere. We put, we tried out our source for corn last year and that helped tremendously. As I mentioned before, really kept the plant green. So we're really looking forward. We basically just put this along with our fungicide, normal fungicide pass on our corn. And we're really looking forward to that. But this year we are also trying source for soybeans. So we're never done fungicide on our soybeans before. So that's going to be different as well as we're putting a fun, a uh, additive with the fungicide and insecticide for source. So if you guys are interested, check them out. Highly, highly, highly recommend them based on what we found last year. Reach out to your nearest retailer and more than likely we'll give you a sample. So anyway, we have not put a second pass of corn up of uh, post-emerge herbicide on this. That's really going to take care of these grasses right through here. We also have some water hemp coming up in here as well. I don't see a lot in this spot, but I know there's water hemp in this field because I had it last year. But we need to go take care of that here. And that's what Pat's going to be doing here. Hopefully, hopefully this week he'll finish up corn and then we can switch over to spraying beans. But this field looks pretty good. And really in general, our fields look really good this year. And the big reason why that is, is we have found that if we can keep the sprayer within two days of the planter, our fields are night and day different than when we are, you know, a week or two behind. And here's the reason. When we can get, 
for our first pass for our corn, what we are doing is we are basically just putting down mesotrone and generic dual and occasionally Roundup and what that does. What the primary effect mode of action for that chemical is, is a residual. It is basically just gonna put a blanket that really hurts the weeds and stunt those from growing up and then lets the corn get up and basically get a head start. Because give the corn another week or so, when it canopies over, if we can get these sprayed and killed off, nothing else is going to grow. Because plants need two things to grow, water and sunlight. Well, when the corn kind of canopies and drowns out all the sunlight, no small weeds are gonna be able to grow. That's why, you know, when I was, when I caught back up to the planter, you know, about halfway through my current, my corn pre-emerge pass, the fields look clean. But you know, towards the beginning of what Pat planted like that, that was a little weedy. So that's just something that we learned. We've had that two out of the last three years we've been able to catch up to the planter and it works and it works well. So you can kind of see, look at these fields are pretty clean for the most part. Along the hay, I left a little bit of a buffer. So you can kind of see it's a little bit weedy within a foot or two. That was on purpose because I didn't want to burn or kill any of the hay because look at this alfalfa. This was cut about a week and a half, two weeks ago and it's already come back nicely. We'll probably be cutting this here in a week or two. Just so you guys know, alfalfa is, a, is the com alfalfa is the actual name. Hay is what it's commonly referred to. There's different types of hay like grass hay or anything. Alfalfa is what's mainly grown in our area. First planted corn right here. Last planted corn right here. Chest uh, head high compared to knee high. But still, not bad for two weeks. Let's go uh, look at, see what else we can see. See if we can find some beans. You guys remember this is actually the first field I sprayed. This little three acre pasture piece that had a lot of water hemp and that had some broadleaf weeds growing in it that I uh, smoked. You can kind of see, see that gray crispy stuff right there on that little terrace? Yeah, smoked those weeds. Card that video right here. So my dad gave me a full SD card worth of footage. So I don't know what all is on there, but I'm assuming the story about number 10 is on there, but just in case he is not, number 10, basically we had cattle break into our hay field Number 10 must have had a lot of alfalfa and you can actually, if you had too much, if you let cattle have too much alfalfa on al and alfalfa alone, they can actually almost get drunk and she actually fell on her herself. So I hope you're doing better, number 10. How are you gals doing? So here's the new, here's the new purchase that we had. It's a new hay bine, disc bine, I guess. New Holland 313 disc bine. I'm assuming that means it's a 13 foot wide. This thing is brand new this year very similar to our old design. It's got the same, or the old model that we had, it's got the same little kind of clevis hook, pin, mechanical drive shaft. But what is different is the old one mechanically drove to the back, gearbox down, and then a, a spun a belt, which got, went to the outside, where this one's all a drive shaft, which I like this much better because we actually burned up a lot of belts, especially when the thing got older. So now it's a mechanical drive shaft, which that drive shaft goes down, drops down, Oh, and spins that cutter bar, which that's actually what cuts the hay, throws it in the back in those conditioners, which crimp the hay and help it dry down a day or two earlier. Nathan, Darren, and Curtis have all ran it, I believe, and they say it worked really well. Nothing fancy about it, just like I said, an update for that mower, because that mower was, shoot, we got that thing brand new when I was in, when I uh, worked here over the summer of 2012, so it was 10 years old, and it was, uh, it was well loved. That's right. Here's our new toy, and apparently it works well. What do you want? That's number 10. She's walking pretty good. But that's not. Number 10's right there. Hi there, 76. So the side-by-side -side won't start. So now I'm going to be crop scouting in this, my unit. So we had the siding all taken off of this shed because I'm guessing it's going to come down once we get rid of the cattle. And I lied. That uh, piece before was not our uh, latest planted corn. This is. You can see, it is very, very, very weedy. Pat ran out on about an acre of spray, so he wasn't able to get everything sprayed. He just ran out, so we're gonna have to hit it with a nice, big, fat rate, that's for sure. But it sounds like I might come up here and spray tomorrow, because Pat's gonna be gone. Let's hop out there and take a look. Dude, even this stuff, this is our latest plant of corn. It is knee high. Wow, at least knee high. This stuff needs to get sprayed tomorrow. So really, all we have left is 40 acres down south, about 35 acres in this field, 38, 25 acres in that field, and then we got three farms up north. So we're getting close, really close. So for the most part, this field looks pretty clean. Poor little guy, stay up. Well, 
I think that thing's done. So these fields look pretty clean, except for, like I said, where Pat didn't spray. So we probably won't need to do a full, full rate. Might have to. Yeah, overall, it's not looking too bad at all. As I walk, try not to uh, break over any more plants. Now let's take a look at this field. This field was planted about now 10 days earlier. It got sprayed a second time already. See a couple weeds that are dead. This field's about, you know, chest high again. And it looks nice, really green. Not much disease pressure coming in that I can see or insects. But again, I'm not walking in deep because this field's already sprayed. We're not gonna worry about it. Let's go back and go look at some beans. So again, here you go. You can look down the rows, pretty clean. I think if, wow, I was looking the wrong way. So you can look down the rows, pretty clean. I think if I come out here and spray, I got these two fields to spray. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline all the waterways and then just do one round around the outside. Because where grass is next to your field, that is where the pressure, the weed pressure or grass pressure is gonna come in from. Broad leaves and whatnot, that's usually spread by your combine taking weed seeds from one infested field to the next non-infested field. And I think for the most part, it looks pretty clean. That, that residual or that uh, first pass that I did looks awesome and it did its job. So I'll talk to Pat and see what he thinks, but I think that's what I would like to do. Now here's our beans. You can kind of see, pretty grassy. They're just about canopied. So what that means is where well, you can't see the ground, the canopy of the, uh, of the plants are basically covering everything. Got a little bit of no-till spots or uh, residue piles where beans didn't come up. You'll have that with your no-till ground at, at some point. But for the most part, I think the, uh, the stand looks pretty good. I didn't bring any um, you know, tools like a hula hoop or a tape measure or anything to do actual stand counts. We're way past replanting anyway, so I figured I might as well not look. But just by ballparking it, this field looks good. So they're right up, these things are right up basically my uh, calf. We're really at the vegetative growth stage for both our corn and our beans. These beans are really just gonna go up mainly, but bush out to really canopy and fill up all the ground contact area. The corn is just gonna grow tall. In the next two weeks, this corn's gonna put on two feet at least. And we're gonna have some corn tasseling probably in two feet too. So, I mean, that's awesome. That two inch rain that we got, that's gonna take us to tassel for sure, at least in a lot of our crop. But the beans don't look horrible. They're gonna get a full rate as soon as we get done with our corn spraying. We got a big punch to throw at it to knock rid of some of these weeds. Like a water hemp, our ragweed are probably our two biggest ones we're gonna fight this year. So we got plenty to do, that's for sure. But as Pat was chatting with me, uh, I definitely messed up when I was cleaning when I was cleaning out in between sprayer loads and I, uh, let's go look at my mess up. I was over at Jerry's, the cattle yard there. We did wrap quite a bit of bales. That's what these round bales are, these, uh, Little big old marshmallows. We wrapped them. In this video, carved it right here. Geez, long time ago. We wrapped them this year because they were they got rained on twice. They weren't gonna dry very well, so we decided just to bale them wet and wrap it. Because typically, when you bale hay, you want it to be dry, the hay to be nice and dry, and that way it keeps. The whole reason is just so it keeps longer. Well, just some circumstances, it just doesn't happen like that. So you can bale it wet, but if unless you wrap it. But if you don't wrap it, it will spoil and it will rot and it's not good. But if you wrap it, it keeps all the uh, oxygen in it and it, help it helps the, the micro, microorganisms and whatnot go to work and actually ferment your hay and it makes it much better. It actually turns it into like silage almost. And that's kind of the same reason why we, why we uh, cover up our pits. Oh, yep, I see what I did. Yeah, that was a mistake. Well, you can see Pat sprayed this. Look at these weeds dying. Yeah, die. So what I did is, I did this twice this year. I pulled in here when I had a new recipe. And like I said, when you have a new recipe, you don't wanna just go in and spray because your, your boom holds 40 gallons. So it's gonna take you about an acre or so to drive through to get your, your product that you want in there actually out to your field. So I did this last year. I just came, pulled in here, cleaned it out. Yeah, then this happened. Wow. I am shocked. I'm guessing that I had boom bean burn down chemical that I sprayed out. I don't know what to think here, but 
I had to have, it, this no, there's no way corn chemical would have done this. I was originally thinking, I know I did this when I switched from a corn chemical to a higher, a higher corn chemical. I sprayed it out here, but I must have had, and that wouldn't have done that. That wouldn't have killed any of this because it might have stunted a little bit, but not this big of an area. Like this is the size of about two pickups. Because I'm guessing what happened was, I know I sprayed it out here and then a rain or just gravity just it flows down into here and, ouch, that is, yeah, yeah. That is not good. You see why Pat was a little upset. So I'm guessing this was a bean chemical that I was switching from beans to corn, sprayed it out, sprayed out my new chemical here and it just must have washed out in here. So, whoops. I'll get rid of wire, how about that? That made up for it. Wow, okay, I see what Pat was talking about. So chemicals can really help you. They can also do tremendous damage like that. So I'm actually, so this is sprayed. I'm just actually gonna walk in because we had a pretty nasty windstorm the other day. So apparently that corn is even taller than the first corn I went to. And apparently that corn got laid over a little bit. So let's go take a look. We got killed here. Whew. So here's the dividing line. This was planted the second day of planting. This was about a week later or so. And you can see it's about a foot difference. Big difference. So I'm just walking out here, see if I see any corn that's laid over. I don't see a lot, which is good. This stuff is tall. Some of this stuff is at my head. Especially once I get down to this spot right there. Pat had a boo-boo. Dang it, Pat. <laughs> yeah, so he was saying this wind kind of laid this corn over, but I can see it's coming back up, which is good. Wow. Yeah, this stuff's at my head. Awesome. Well, I think I'm gonna close it down for this video, guys. I'm gonna head home here shortly. I actually gotta head up to Bellevue do a little bit more crop scouting, but I think I'll probably make that a separate video because I've been, yeah, I've been relying on a lot on this one. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. A lot of stuff coming. This corn's really gonna be shooting up here soon. I'm going to Europe in two weeks, so that's also gonna be fun just for some vacation with the wife and the family. So thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, take it easy, stay safe. Like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our channel sponsor, Source. And of course, guys, as always, talk to for now. Might have been talking too loud for those cattle because they all ran out of that barn. Sorry guys.